Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, thank you very much for the kind invitation to this joint symposium between a German spy and society in your distinguished society. And it's a pleasure to detail you our key concepts for the surgical management of thoracic disc herniations, which is still a challenge despite all the advances that we have seen in the surgical treatment of degenerative spine disease. So why is it so difficult sometimes to treat these um, to thoracic disc herniations. Number one, it's, these are quite rare and this is why we are not really um, prepared and trained well because less than 1% of all disc herniations are in the thoracic level. Number two, there is really no room for conservative treatment since most of the patients will present with severe neurological symptoms asking for a surgical treatment. Most of these lesions are localized in the mid-thoracic area and they are localized centrally and sometimes intradural, which makes it challenging to remove them without injuring the um, spinal cord. And most of these are hard and they are calcified, which again makes it difficult to fish them out of the spinal canal. The diagnostic workup, that's how it starts, is uh, straightforward. Number one, we start with the MR. Most of these patients present with incomplete spinal cord symptoms. And then, we, then we, when we have identified the, the disc herniation, we have to clarify whether it's soft or whether it's calcified. And this is usually done with a CT imaging, as in this case, where we can identify the, the centrally localized calcified disc herniation. The laminectomy, the pure laminectomy, has been the standard approach for most of these lesions for a long time. Today we have learned that this is a high-risk surgical procedure which is meanwhile obsolete for thoracic disc herniations because the complication rate is high and even there is a certain risk for mortality of these patients due to a, due to a severe a spinal cord injury. It's obvious that just removing the dorsal lamina will not adequately decompress the spinal canal in the kyphotic thoracic spine where the disc herniations will push the spinal cord back. And this is why in the past several procedures have been suggested for the surgical treatment and for the surgical removal of thoracic discs where either the, the pedicle, the facet joint, the, the rib head or um, parts of the rib are removed or we are coming in through, thora uh, through a thoracotomy to come more laterally and advancing more laterally to the, to the spinal cord and to the spinal column. But basically it's very simple. If the thoracic disc is localized medially and is hard, then one should come from a posterolateral lateral or from a lateral approach. If it's soft or localized more laterally, then um, a posterior approach might be um, sufficient if, par if parts of the facet joints or the, the pedicle are removed. Here, our favorite approach, and this is what I would like to detail first, is the uh, mini-open trans-thoracic approach where we will um, where we'll advance to the spine through a retropleural preparation. The patient is, um, look, uh, is, is positioned in a lateral position. We will expose, expose the rib over the um, index level. The rib will be removed over a length of approximately five centimeters. Then we will perform a blunt dissection retropleurally and we will identify the, uh, the, the disc and we will retract the, the lung. And this can be all done by microscopic means and for sure maybe endoscopic means are not necessary. Everything can be done microscopically. And the concept is then to drill a, a cavity into the bone, into the disc space which will then allow to push the calcified fragment away from the spinal cord into this cavity and thereby directly decompress the spinal canal and the spinal cord from this calcified disc. Besides the microscopic approach, the fra the, the, uh, this approach has been also um, benefited from navigation and intraoperative imaging. Here we have a case where we, that we have performed a full navigated approach, we have identified the level, we have planned the extent of resection and we have performed intraoperative imaging in order to confirm the extent of bony resection and the, the, the removal of the calcified discs. So navigation and intraoperative CT are really helpful uh, tools in order to further improve on the quality of uh, the surgical removal of these thoracic discs through a trans, trans thoracic approach. And in our last cases, we have ad further advanced to the minimally, minimally invasive approach using these tubes, 
which are inserted through the mini thoracotomy. They are placed at the level of at the index level, and today we are removing discs through these tubes, which again minimizes the trauma or the minimizes the access to these discs. This is a video detailing the classical microscopic approach, the transthoracic approach to this calcified um, thoracic disc. Here is the mini opening, uh, the small skin incision, the exposure of the rib, which is removed for a length of five centimeters. Then we have the blunt dissection, retropleurally, the lung is slowly mobilized. And here we are at the bottom of the preparation, the lateral aspect of the spine. We can identify the disc and we are slowly removing the soft tissue or mobilizing the soft tissue. Here the segmental vessel is coagulated and controlled and then, and then cut. We identify the, the rib head which will be removed partially in order to identify the lateral aspect of the pedicle in order to gain access to the spinal cord. This is again um, identifying the correct level either by fluoro or by navigation. Here we are using the high-speed drill and now we are removing parts of the disc in the center. We are um, removing the, the ligament over the disc and then we will use the high-speed drill in order to create that cavity approximately 5 millimeters into the upper um, end plate and 5 millimeters into the lower end plate and this cavity will then allow to push the fragments into this cavity away from the spinal cord. We are using the, the drill with a continuous irrigation and by getting more towards the spinal cord we can then identify the posterior ligament which is usually calcified. Sometimes it's very, it's very attached to the, um, to the disc fragment and here you can identify the dura and then with the help of the assistant and with the help of microsurgical sharp dissection techniques, the calcified posterior ligament plus the calcified disc are pulled away from the dura uh, instead of um, mobilizing the disc directly to us. So first pushing the fragments into the um, into this cavity will allow to slowly decompress um, the spinal canal and you can see the, 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 the stepwise decompression of the dura. And then we are using the intraoperative CT in order to confirm the extent of our drilling and to confirm the removal of the calcified disc. In addition to this transthoracic approach, I would like to introduce you to an additional alternative which has been recently described by the Dutch group around um, Dr. Coppes. The, the route they are taking is again a posterior approach, but instead of going around the dura, the dura is open in, opened in the posterior level, then the dentate ligament is cut, the dura can then be rotated uh, using um, sutures which are tacked to the, posterior, to the dural ligament, and then this allows us to open the anterior dura again and then with you having a transdural approach to the disc you are then able to slowly remove soft discs and even hard discs. This has been initially reported with 13 patients. Meanwhile, the group has an experience with 30 patients. The results are very good and the complication rates are low. We have tried these with our last um, uh, cases. This is a case of a soft central um, localized um, disc. Here we have already opened the posterior dura. Here is the dentate ligament which has been cut. The spinal cord is rotated. You can see the tack-up suture and here the anterior dura has been opened in size sharply and the soft disc is slowly removed. And you can appreciate the minimally invasive access to this um, delicate area and by, um, by mobilizing the dentate ligament, the spinal cord can be now manipulated in a way um, that the disc can be removed. It comes without saying that all these manipulations are done under neurophysiological monitoring with the continuous assessment of MEPs and SEPs, but with a hook and with um, the, the micro dissectors, these um, soft discs and sometimes even the hard discs can be removed by this posterior transdural approach. The dura is then simply sutured with 6-0 sutures or it can be patched 
or glued, especially the anterior dura um, will then be compressed and uh, the posterior dural is classically um, sutured. So we have two approaches which are very helpful in treating thoracic disc herniations today. The neurological outcome in the literature has been reported to be excellent. In comparison to the data that we have from the laminectomy, we see excellent results, especially with the trans transthoracic approach, but also the posterolateral and the lateral approaches seem to be very efficient and um, more successful than the laminectomy alone. Here you can see the predictors of an unfavorable outcome and especially the preoperative motor deficits and those patients that had previous surgeries, these patients seem to be high-risk candidates despite everything that we can do uh, with modern surgical techniques. Here another study sh uh, detailing the postoperative complications and nicely showing that in comparison to laminectomy, the posterolateral and the lateral approaches are characterized by very few complications, neurological complications, and the same is um, true for the surgical approach complications, where all, these are compli where all these approaches are characterized by a low incidence of surgical or approach associated complications. So in conclusion, this is our current working algorithm for the surgical management of um, thoracic disc herniations. We start with an MR and with a CT. Those uh, thoracic disc herniations that are soft and that are lateral are good candidates for posterior lateral approaches where we remove the pedicle, remove the, hit, the, the, um, the rib hat or even parts of the proximal rib. Then these soft and lateral discs can be removed safely. If, however, the disc is localized more centrally or if it is hard or calcified on the CT, then we, would, then we will consider a posterior transdural approach if they are more on the lateral side, which I've shown you. And if they are really centered in the, in the midline, lo set, lo localized centrally, and if they are hard and calcified, and if they are of big size, then we would recommend rather come in from a transthoracic approach if they are extradural. And if we can identify them to be intradural, we would come in with a posterior transdural approach. And I hope and I'm convinced that this kind of algorithm might be of use in the future for treating um, thoracic discs in, in, in your practice. Thank you very much for your attention. Doc, there's just uh, one question here. Now, don't you think that fixation and fusion at the index level is important because the procedure creates a big cavity in the adjacent bodies? This is our, from our Professor Sudhir Srivastava. I Did think that's an important question? question and um, everybody, and this has to be considered on a very individual basis. If you look at the literature about the long follow-up of these I mean, this is not a big cavity. It's a, it's a minimized um, oblique drilling that you do from coming in from the transthoracic approach. So all the literature sa says that you might not need a fusion. And until the posterior elements are intact because the patient has not had previous surgery, um, our experience is that you will get away. But obviously, you have to assess the amount of drilling intraoperatively or postoperatively. And if you feel that you have destabilized the spine because you have removed too much bone, then a second staged um, surgery with a posterior lateral fusion makes sense. And I would rather recommend to do one more than do, to do one few or not, not enough. But the data is not really supporting the need in general for, for fusion. Okay, a couple of quick questions. Uh, how do you deal with CSF leak in trans uh, 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 thoracic approach? that is transpural. How do you deal with CSF leak in a transthoracic approach that is transplural? That's the perfect question for the upcoming case illustration that I'm going to show you. Because in the case that I will describe in a few minutes, we really created a leak due to a very calcified large um, disc fragment. And we tried to patch this coming in from, through the transthoracic approach and it didn't really work. So the lesson that we have learned, just to tell you in advance from this case is that it's really helpful to come in early through a posterior approach and repair the leak um, transdurally. 
So this is really a good question. And I think trying to fix it for a trans-thoracic approach is often not successful. Thank you, Peter. I think we should stop there because there are lots of questions coming up, but I'm sure uh, we'll, uh, you will address them at a later time. Uh, we will move on to Bharat Dave. Uh, panel uh, faculty to uh, look at the chat box, Dr. Peter, Dr. Uh, Marcus, Dr. Frank, and Dr. Ulf, because there are a lot of questions for you on the chat box. If yes. you look at that, you can answer them. Yeah. Now we will move on to the next topic, surgical approaches to thoracic myelopathy by Bharat Dave. 